Hello photography fans and welcome to another episode about classic cameras and classic photo gear. In today's episode we're going to be discussing yet another classic beauty. We're going to be talking about a folding camera, not just any old folding camera. We're going to be discussing Japanese Vautox Okako camera. Here it is. This is a camera that was a series of cameras, a folding cameras, four and a half by six, so half frame roughly of a medium format. And you wonder why they call it half frame of medium format if frame is six by six? Well, actually, the original frame was 6x9, so 6x9, half, four and a half. These cameras were produced in, J in Japan between uh, 1940 and 1952. The original Valtax, that was a little bit different than this. This is Valtax 2. It has many interesting features, so let's get a closer look at it. So here it is, a Japanese Valtax made by Okako in Tokyo, Japan. As you can see it's a four... well actually you can't see. All you can see it is a folding camera. A very compact folding camera featuring 75 millimeter focal length lens, anastigmat, bio colex. Uh, whether it's good or not I don't know. It's, it's comparable to Tessar I believe. This camera is a copy, as many cameras were back in the day, they're, they're copies of other cameras, more popular cameras. This one is supposed to be mimicking German Ekanta. I just finished a roll of film with it and I'm gonna process it tonight to see what comes up. The shutter seems accurate but that's just by ear. We'll see what happens with black and white film. So let's start uh, from the front of it. Let's talk about some features here. As you can see there's a little window. It's, it's not a rangefinder camera because there's only one window. However, uh, this is the viewfinder. It, it just allows you to kind of frame uh, your shot. The, I would say half-ass. It works. It's almost centered with the lens. Just a slightly up center. But that's not a problem unless you're shooting real close-ups, let's say three, four feet. Over here you have a winding knob, a film advanced knob. It is marked with a red arrow and it tells you which direction to turn it in order to uh, advance the film. Speaking of which, in the back you have a little window and a little slider, which is really neat. Some of the cameras back then especially cheap cameras, didn't have the little closing windows. There you go. Very neat. It prevents the light leaks. Uh, in my experience with some of these old cameras, I actually had to put a piece of electrical tape over the window so the film doesn't get fogged. On top here, you have a depth of field calculator. Okay, So you have your apertures here and your uh, distance distance scale so the way to read the way to use it is actually let's say you're gonna sh be shooting an f16 and I'm gonna focus pre-focus at 15 feet so I know that if I focus at 15 feet all my picture is gonna be within acceptable sharpness between 6 feet and infinity. And then as your aperture changes you go up the scale at the scale. Of course the wide open aperture have very shallow depth of field. This really helps if you if you suck at focusing and determining the distances. Over here this little knob, this little push button is actually a release button for the hatch. So if I close the hatch and I press it, 
it actually releases a little, little latch inside there and it opens up the whole hatch. This over here is a shutter release button. Yeah, it's on the left. It's strange, but you know what? It's just not that problematic. What's interesting about it is about the whole camera. Actually, there's a little there's a little hole here. And let me zoom in. That little hole if you look straight down, it you you're going to see red um some kind of red marking. What the catalogs and websites say is actually indicator that the film has uh, has been advanced and the camera is ready to shoot. However, I tried that and it doesn't work that way. Mine could be broken. Um, yeah, not all cameras are 100% functional. This one I purchased for seven dollars. Yeah, you just can't beat that. So even if the little window is, is damaged, I'm used to these. Um, I'm used to the fact that I have to advance the film and then cut the shutter and then advance the film and I can't forget that, especially on these old cameras. Moving on, over here on with this little tab, you select the apertures. The apertures vary from 3.5 to f22, which is a standard selection. And over here you use the neural dial to select the shutter speed. And the shutter speeds vary from B, one second, all the way up to 500 of a second. And let's listen to the beautiful sound of a shutter on this camera. It doesn't get any better than that. Camera is beautifully finished nice nickel coated chrome coated pieces uh, very nice uh, finished top very well organized this here is your release uh, tab to open the back so you simply pull it up and the back swings open and as you can see this is four and a half by six centimeter um, format camera it's still a medium format, but it's half frame medium. In order to close it, you simply swing the back back in and press the button, press the tab down. In order to focus the camera, you simply grab the front element of the lens and you focus it. The focus, infinity focus is marked with red. And then it goes down all the way to three feet. I kind of suck at determining the distance so I'm gonna rely on my um, nifty calculator here to help me with zone focusing. There's a little nifty kickstand that you simply pull out and you can sit your camera down. There's this little nifty red guy. I for some reason thought it was actually um, the release port for some kind of odd looking um, cable release but it's not it it could actually be port for flash so I'm thinking that's probably it but if any of you camera buffs out there know what this thing does please let me know there's a flash cold shoe port on the, on top of the camera on the top plate so that little guy could be uh, related to to this, although I'm not 100% sure. The camera, the camera case itself um, is kind of falling apart, but it's still it's still there. So I'm gonna keep it. It's nicely. Uh, it has nice. Can't call it felt. It's, I don't know what this is. Um, fabric in there, and what I like about it is this uh, stamped writing made in occupied Japan which is really cool it means it was uh, produced right after the World War II uh, when Japan was occupied over here on the front portion of the case you have a stamp where it says Okako Okako Valtax 
in order to close this camera you have these two beautiful tabs or, or struts you just push down on them and the camera simply closes of course my latch doesn't really work well so as you can see but despite all the uh, bits that may not work on this camera the shutter works, the aperture works and the film advance works that's all I need and the lens is clean and clear that's all I need to take pictures I'm gonna measure light with my uh, external meter or I'm gonna guess the exposure using uh, Sony 16 I can zone focus with the calculator there's nothing else I, I I really want on this camera so I'm gonna go ahead and shoot a roll and hopefully if the results are decent I'm gonna set, share them at the end of the video so ladies and gentlemen I hope you enjoyed this um, short overview of Okako Valtux 2 four and a half by six folding camera stay tuned subscribe for more overviews of classic beauties and don't forget keep shooting film and keep the film alive